And when you look back in history, people constantly compare the threat of automation and job loss in the 21st century to what happened in the 20th century. In the 20th century, you saw automation in agriculture, so lots of unemployed farm workers moved to working in industry. And then when automation reached the industries, uh, they moved to working as cashiers in, at Walmart. But in those cases, what happened was that people lost low-skilled jobs and transferred to other low-skilled jobs. Moving from being an agricultural worker to a, working in some car factory in Detroit, you moved from one low-skilled job to another low-skilled job. When you lost your job at the Detroit car factory and got a new job as a cashier at Walmart, again, you moved from a low-skilled job to a low-skilled job. But the next stage, if, what, if, if, if the next stage means I'm losing my job at 45 as a cashier at Walmart, and now there is an opening as a software engineer at Google designing virtual worlds, this is going to be much more difficult than moving from the car factory to, the, to Walmart. And it's very likely that even if there are new jobs, most of the unemployed masses will not be able to make the transition. It's also a big question about, about young people that nobody really knows what the job market would be like in 20 or 30 years. It's really the first time in history that nobody has any idea what kind of jobs and what kind of skills people will need in 30 years, which means that we have absolutely no idea what to teach children at school. Most of what they learn is going to be irrelevant to the requirements of the job market and of society in 2050. What to teach them instead, we just don't know. And the worst problem, of course, is not in the developed countries, but in the developing countries. If you think about a country like, I don't know, Sweden, uh, which now gets a lot of attention in, in, in the US. <laughs> so I'm not so worried about the Swedes. I mean, even if, even if millions of jobs are lost in Sweden, I, I, I think that because of the tradition of the welfare state and so forth, the Swedish government will raise taxes on the big companies and universal basic income or something like that. The Swedes will be OK, I think. The really big question is what will happen to the Nigerians, to the Bangladeshi, to the Brazilians. If millions of textile workers in Bangladesh lose their jobs because of automation, what will they do? I mean, we are not teaching the children of Bangladesh today to be software engineers. What will they do in 20 or 30 years? And do you really think that, I don't know, the US government will raise taxes on Google and Amazon in California and use that to pay basic income to the unemployed Bangladeshi? If you believe that, you can just as well believe that Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny will come and take care of the Bangladeshi. Because uh, I don't think this is a realistic uh, uh, solution. Nobody knows what the solution is. So we may be facing, in the 21st century, a completely new kind of inequality, which we have never seen before in human history. On the one hand, the emergence of a new upgraded elite of superhumans enhanced by bioengineering and brain-computer interfaces and things like that. And on the other hand, a new massive useless class, a class that has no military or economic usefulness and therefore also no political power. Mm -hmm.